All right, everybody, on this edition of the Fit Rockstar Show, we have the beautiful, sensational three-time Miss Olympia Arnold Classic champion. She's a mother. She is one of the most interesting people I have ever met, very positive. She is the comeback kid, the Tom Brady of women's fitness, Whitney Jones. Hello, hello. <laughs> what an intro. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying here. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Oh, please. Come on. <laughs> so I want to start out, first of all, thank you for coming. Of course. Heck I know yeah. you came a long way. A long way. I mean, it was like at least four minute drive. Okay. <laughs> I, very tough. Very eight tough. minutes for me. I was longer. <laughs> well, I also forgot to mention that she is the host of FemFlex Friday. Yes. Which, so this is interesting to be on the other side. I'm actually mm -hmm. being interviewed and got to try and be professional. You know, that's so difficult for me. No, just be crazy. <laughs> Okay, good. Just be yourself. Done. I love Done. it. We're just having a conversation. You are a very positive person. Uh, you've overcome a lot of things. You have that never give up attitude, yes. which I love. Yeah. And you keep it very real. Yes. Extreme. I don't know how to fake much of anything. <laughs> so what you see is what you get. But I do have to ask, how many cups of coffee do you drink today to have all this energy? Honestly, um, <laughs> rarely do I drink coffee. I almost do it like as a placebo thing because... <laughs> Caffeine doesn't really ever affect me. You so, are so happy. Like yeah. always making everybody laugh. And But it's a, a mindset of gratitude, honestly, and appreciating what you have, not focusing on what you don't have, not sure. being envious. And sure. just I've been very fortunate to have amazing things in my life. And I enjoy every journey and every experience and honestly, every failure, too, because there's always so many valuable lessons so you just have to take life for what it is, make the best of it. So even in the bad times, hard times, you know, turn lemons into lemonade, they say. And that's what I try to do. Uh, that doesn't work for me, the lemons and lemonade. Yeah. It goes the opposite. <laughs> How about oranges and orange juice? I don't know. Uh, no, 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 not even that. It comes, anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to read a little something that I took off your Instagram that pretty much explains what I'm going to be going into with you. Okay. And you will recognize this. After a while, I looked in the mirror and realized, wow, after all those hurts, scars, and bruises, after all those trials, I really made it through. I did it. I survived that which was supposed to kill me. So I straightened my crown and walked away like a boss. And you truly are a boss. Oh, well, a boss thanks. Babe. Thank so you. In saying that, I'm obviously going on to everything that you have went through, mm -hmm. which was a lot. Yeah. I don't even know <laughs> how you do it. It's been a crazy journey. <laughs> uh, and we will get into that. One of the things I want to say to you is uh, congratulations on your third Thanks. Olympia. I know it's overdue. A month's gone by. but Oh, uh, it's still fun. It's still, I mean, unbelievable in my mind. So still out, new to me. Well, out of all your Olympia wins, which one is your favorite? Most sentimental? Gosh, that's a great question. Um... The second was probably, I mean, I'd say the second or third. The first, I think you just don't really know what to expect, and it just seems surreal. Like, I just got chills even thinking about it. It's I see so that goosebumps. Special. Look at that. I know. Yeah. I know. Man, I Zoom you're seeing them on, <laughs> on screen. But then the second one, like, defending your title is tough. Right. There's a lot of pressure, and you have to be on point. You have to have the right mindset. You have to not let yourself succumb to the pressure. And it's not easy. I mean, everyone's vying for that title. And there's only one place to go when you're at the top, and that's to go down. So you have to go in fighting, fighting for what you want. But also, a true champion can take a loss. And you have to be prepared for that if it happens. So um, winning it was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is crazy. Plus, having gone through it, it happens so fast. It's kind of like people say, when you get married and your wedding day, you plan for so yeah, many right, months, yes. and then all of a sudden it's one day and it's over. The second time I was able to appreciate literally every little moment, every little thing. And so it was more special because I, w I wanted to make sure I valued it. Whereas the first time it was just like, oh my gosh, I was just in shock. What you know, obviously it's like I worked for it, I wanted it, but then when it happens... You don't know what to expect. And then after, obviously, I didn't get my title. I didn't um, defend my title in 2020, but 
still wasn't done. I wanted to come back and get that title back. So last year was even better. And then, of course, um, with the journey of <laughs> breaking my leg a few days before was just is insane. crazy. So there's different um, special attributes to each journey, not even every win. Even my losses, there's, I always feel like I have won because if you've done everything that you set out to do, you can't fail. You can't put that validation in the judge's hands. We all want that championship title. We always want that pro win or whatever it is, mm -hmm. but you still have to be proud of your hard work. You still have to be proud of what you brought. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's amazing things with each win, with each loss and, um, it's special. My third win was extremely special, just again, under the circumstances and, um, you know, just all the little stuff that goes into it, still appreciating every single moment from meet the athletes to, you know, the check-in process to the superstar seminar afterwards. I mean, so many things are so special. If you're not truly appreciating it and soaking it all in, what the hell are you doing? You're missing out. So, yeah, I mean, they all have special memories and moments for me. Well, the third win, I have to say, was uh, a really hell of a victory. Because, again, going back in time, the Arnold Classic, unfortunately, you had COVID. Yeah. Well, I didn't or, have or, COVID. <laughs> yes, exactly. Quote, unquote, a yeah. false, what we call a false <clears throat> positive, right? Yeah. Well, anyway... So moving on, I mean, that happened. And again, I was there at the Arnold and I was around. A lot of people were devastated that you were not doing it. I mean, they were just yeah. like, because everybody loves you. Who does not love you? Oh, well, thank you. I mean, you're such a great pro athlete performer. You really know how to bring the entertainment and wow factor. Thanks. And so, you know, they usually say well, Missy obviously won the Arnold. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting if you had actually got into that, how that would have went. I know. Right. And they say that the usually the Arnold winner goes mm -hmm. in to win the Olympia. Right. Well, you proved that wrong. You came in, right. did the work, did everything possible, gave them something, blew their minds, mm -hmm. the judges, and you won. So yeah. I mean that to me was like what a what a victory. Right. Well, and especially because truth be told, and um, you know, I haven't talked a ton about this, but my routine at Olympia was not my routine. <laughs> Because obviously when I had the injury, I had to change stuff that I never got to practice that routine. Wow. And I had a prop at the beginning that they changed the stage. So just a couple hours before, my whole opening had to be totally modified. So what you saw on the Olympia stage at 2021 was a routine I'd never once performed. And it's just kind of winging it and hoping that it works. And then, of course, hoping my leg didn't give out. So the Arnold routine would have been totally different. Sure. I mean, that would have been my actual routine. So mm -hmm. it would have been, um, you know, obviously trying to say, okay, if I did Arnold healthy and then went into Olympia and had that injury, it would have been totally different. Mm -hmm. But still, it's tough to think back and go, huh, what could have been? Guess we'll never know. And you kind of, well, it, well, all that matters is you got the Olympia title, yes. right? I mean, right. look, sometimes things happen for a reason. It, it totally. wasn't great. Right. Let's be honest. It, it was devastating because you worked so hard for that. Yeah. I can't even imagine what you went through. Just, yeah. You know. I mean, it was, obviously, it was absolutely devastating sure. and shocking because I knew I wasn't sick. I had three tests right. prior right. from different facilities. Just, I brought those tests just as backup because I thought... I mean, go in prepared. You go in prepared for everything, right? Right. And never expected a test to come back at the Arnold that showed I was positive. And then as soon as I got home, which was two days later, I ended up testing right when I got back to Arizona, and it was negative too. So it's like, I know I wasn't sick. Right, of course. But at that point, you have to accept it. You, like you said, things happen for a reason. I will never know why or what happened or what went wrong. I mean, I still have never even seen proof. Never got test results from them. But at that point, my focus was, that's in the past. I've sure. got to focus on what's ahead. And for me, as you said, like I have to stay positive. I could not put any of my energy into what happened and be angry and negative. I wanted everything to be focused on what I was going to accomplish in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And so mindset was just zero, like laser focused. And anyone that was bringing up or talking about it, you know, I had everyone reaching out and they want to interviews. And I said, nope, I I'm focused. I've got, I've got a goal. 
I'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah, but I a, just couldn't give sure. it any energy. No, that's absolutely smart. Yeah, you know because these people, some people are like leeches. Yeah, absolutely. And when you have eyes on the prize, you you don't need any of that negativity right. distractions because they may seem oh sweet, but then they may come in with yeah. Oh yeah. Nope. You know. Wasn't gonna have it. No. Mm-mm. Well, again, it was just a truly remarkable. Uh, experience seeing you win that because that routine was thank on fire you. well and to hear that you thank just you how long did it take you to make just two weeks what was yeah there was two well not even because in reality i mean we fly out for olympia a week early just to kind of get acclimated right. then you have to be there obviously and have stuff done in regards to being ready for meet the athletes and the check-ins and i usually will go um do some of my workouts that olympia week so i had a week at home that I was just trying to kind of sure. practice training and then heading back out. So uh, mindset needed to be on point at the top of my game, and that was my focus. I mean, I went from here to here, and it was like, I got to get back up sure. before I ever get to Florida. Otherwise, I won't be in the competitive mind frame that I need to in order to get that title back. So it was interesting with you, too. I think 2018, now, that year you had a neck injury, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, I had, I was recovering. I had, um, broke my neck the year prior. So I had the surgery and that was in 2017. My first show back was 2018 at the Arnold. So when I had surgery, uh, in, uh, the summer of 2017, the morning of surgery, I set a countdown clock on my phone oh my God. to keep me motivated to get back. Wow. And obviously, you know, there's that going into surgery, they said I may there was a 50 50 shot that I would still never regain any feeling in my right arm because it was just at that point it was limp. It just wouldn't Mm -hmm. even move. It was like it wasn't even attached to me, but 50 50 shots. So they're saying there's a chance. Mm -hmm. So I just went with that and I knew that I was going to recover and I was going to come back. I didn't know at what capacity. But again, the power of positive thinking, as cliche as it is, that's what's helped me survive all these years through all the craziness that's happened. And that's what I went with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, to hear that you're only, your next, you're only going to be able 50%, that's a lot. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. What if the doctor would have said a 30% chance? Would you still have been like, you know what, I'm still going to go for it? Totally. Because I just... Everyone was saying, your career is over. And I just never believed it. I thought, yeah, it's a neck injury. And maybe it's because I've broken so many bones. And I think at that point, I'd only had 15 surgeries, uh, which is a lot. But but, I mean, (laughs) I've had experience with it. And I thought, I've proved people wrong my entire life. Everyone that's saying my career is over, that's a bunch of BS. Like, I will show them. And again, like I said, I may not have been at the best that I could have been or where I left off in my fitness career. But I'm a mom, and that is my greatest joy. And I was so worried that I wouldn't have two good functioning arms to give them hugs. And it was like, I'm not just going to let this happen. So obviously, like, trying to be a competitive athlete again was definitely on my radar. But I was focusing, too, on the basics. I want to be able to throw a football to my boys as they're, like, growing up and playing sports, throw a baseball, hug them, just all the basic things. And I thought, there's no way. There's no way I'm going out like this. Uh Uh-uh. I've got to fight, and i got to find a way. And I know with rehab and with my injuries, you can prove people wrong all the time. I've proved so many doctors wrong in my life that now it's kind of like I take it as a challenge. I'm like, yeah, okay, tell me what I can't do. Right. And all you're doing is lighten that fire. So even if they would have said a 5%, you ha- for me, I was like, do the surgery. Let's see what happens. And honestly, when I woke up from surgery, I had the tubes in my throat, neck. The first thing I did is I went and I could feel my arm. And I was like, I just remember my, my dad was there and he looked at me and I just shook my head like, it's on. <laughs> like, this is, I, I'm good. I can feel my arm already. So I knew it was just, it was my comeback, another comeback from a crazy story. But it worked. You're like the Terminator. Yeah. Right? I have enough metal in my body. <laughs> I could but be. I mean, you're always coming back. You don't stop. Yeah. You oh, keep no. coming. You it's know? either Terminator or the roach that just won't die and you oh, keep trying God. to smash it. Speaking of roaches, <laughs> I saw uh, somebody played a joke on you and you opened up oh the my microwave God. and you started screaming. I will say, I hate roaches. So I almost got you some live oh. roaches, <laughs> the big flying ones. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, hell no. <laughs> like, I'm pretty fearless with most things, but 
bugs like roaches or spiders. I don't oh know what God. it is. Oh, I think I had two older brothers growing up. And so they tortured me with lots of little things. And yeah, those things still, I think it takes me back to those stories. I'm like, ah. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. So let's go back in time. I wanna know Whitney as the little girl. <clears throat> oh, wow. What was she like? Well, so I was, I'm born in Jackson, Mississippi. So my family's from the South. And I have two older brothers, so I was the youngest, and it's just the three of us. And my mom was so excited to have a little girl and, you know, great and all. But I was not a girly girl. I was a straight tomboy because I idolized my two older brothers. We're super close. I wanted to be just like them. Well, they weren't wearing the frilly dresses that everyone in the South wears. I'm like, what is this? So literally, I'd go out and... Mom, can I go play? And I would like rip the frills and the skirts off and be like, can I put my jeans on now? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so I've always just been active. Um, I loved sports growing up. You know, obviously, as I got older, I did like the, the makeup and kind of being girly to a certain extent. But I've always kind of had that tomboy in me, which I think is what helps me be that competitive athlete, have that drive. And I attribute so much to my brothers. I mean, honestly, they helped me as an athlete because I wanted to constantly level up. I wanted to play the sports that they were playing that typically weren't girl sports, like football. Mm -hmm. I used to get dressed up on Saturdays as they were getting ready for their games, and I'd put on their shoulder pads, and oh I'd put on their gosh. helmet, and I'd go sit in the car. And my mom and dad would come out, and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I want to play. And they're like, you can't play football. You can be a cheerleader. And I'm like, oh, that's so lame. But yeah, I mean, it's just they helped me find that competitive drive and, and enjoy it and love it. So is this where your fire came from? Probably. I mean, honestly, it was even literally growing up playing board games. It was it's it's still to this day. We have holidays and we'll play board games. And it is hilarious to sit back and watch my brothers and I. Oh, man, it's all everything's a competition. It could be something as stupid as who can stand on one leg like a flamingo for the longest. Like we will throw down money and it's on. Oh, oh yeah, it's, <laughs> it's always crazy. on when it's money's there, right? Oh, it doesn't even have to be money. It can be a piece of candy. It can be nothing. It can be pride. I'm always down. But yeah, I mean, it's just I've enjoyed it. I love the challenge of competition. And like I said, it's not always winning. I mean, I've taken a lot of losses in oh, my yeah. day and. Yeah. There's always these valuable lessons, what you learn about yourself on how you handle losses. And if you can keep an open mind and recognize the lessons in it or where you went wrong, what can you do better? All it's doing is propelling you as a person. So it's like if you lost as, you know, in, in my, a softball game or a cheer competition or a diving competition, I would always go back and go, okay, well, what could I have done better? And it was never a gosh, why didn't I win? Poor me. I put in so much work. No, it was always just like, all right, well, let's, let's do better. What do I need to change? What do I need to improve? And I like that because it gives me goals to work towards. It's not just doing the same thing day in and day out. Mm -hmm. And once I got in this sport too, literally after every show, the very next morning while everything's fresh in your head, I would look at my photos, stage photos, and go through my routine and go, okay, for the next show, whether it was weeks away, six months away, a year away, what am I going to do to improve? What physique changes do I want to mm -hmm. work on? What skills do I want to improve on in my routine while it's hot in your brain? And then you kind of set out your strategy. You set out your plan. That way, it always keeps it interesting. Mm -hmm. you know? So what's interesting with you, too, is that you don't have any experience, like no gymnastic you didn't cheerlead, right? I did do did cheerleading. Cheer, but um, no gymnastics. No gymnastics at and all. And you started out in figure. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. figure was too boring for you, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> what was it? What was the routine or what was it that you saw that said, you know what? I want to do that. I'm all about fun. And like, honestly, no. so, I know. So shocked. And I'm so shy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I, I didn't really know 
much about the fitness division. I had seen it, you know, but I didn't realize like at a lot of the local shows, you rarely saw the fitness mm-hmm. girls because mm-hmm. there's unfortunately not tons of us because it's hard. Right. So I Nobody was wants to show. work, right? Yeah, exactly. It requires a lot of work, mm-hmm. a lot of heart. Mm-hmm. But I was, you know, I liked it. I liked the sport and I liked the challenge. But I'm all about fun and I love to perform. That's why I did cheerleading. But cheerleading back in the day for me, it's not like it is now. It was just kind of like, it it wasn't competitive. We weren't in like these massive nationwide competitions like they are nowadays. You, You had a coach, but you came up with your own little like routines and stuff. And so it was very mediocre. It's not like we were learning anything there, but I loved just the entertainment value of it and, and having fun and being creative. So I was at the show and I saw these girls in costumes and jumping around. They had music and I'm like, I don't know who they are, but their vibe is amazing. And I kind of want to hang with them. And that's where I was like, Oh, okay. Anyone can do fitness. Mm -hmm. And I was, I knew nothing about it in regards to the mandatories, and did my first show and learned quickly. Oh, there, there's requirements. <laughs> so what were, what did you do in your routine, your first one? Oh, it was horrendous. <laughs> it was basically you have just, video. Yeah, I need to find it. It's oh, that hilarious. Would, that would be great. <laughs> I had these booty shorts. There was that song called "I Can Be a Freak." I oh can, yeah, I, yeah, summer man. So yeah, I had these blinged out booty shorts that had "freak" on the butt and just kind of did some booty shaking and very mediocre skills because I didn't have any skills. I didn't know how to do push flies, like any of these plyometric power jumps. And oh, yeah. it was literally like a dance routine. And then I had some basic push ups, but it's not like I was super strong back then. I was just kind of the standard of someone that goes to the gym and works out. And then um, I had some of the judges and the promoter saying, oh, you know, you did great. I, I won. I won the overall. Oh, wow. Well, but I was the only competitor. <laughs> Okay. But hey, I right. still... You won. I, still, I won. Yeah, doesn't matter. Won. Yeah, you won. Right. <laughs> but they're like, yeah, um, it needs to be longer because it was 45 seconds. Again, had no clue. And they're like, why don't you kind of put some skill into it? And I was like, it's a great idea. What kind of skill are you talking <laughs> about? Right. So it was a total learning lesson for me. But then once I learned it, I love being able to go, okay, I can't do any of that stuff, but I want to try. Right. And all it takes is just the desire to try. And it's just like, okay, someone is doing a push up or a pull up. They're not easy in the beginning. And maybe you can bust out just a few, but the more you do it, and if you're consistently doing it multiple days a week, your strength skills, they are amazing. And so I learned a lot of the strength skills. Like I said, I don't have any gymnastics right. experience. So I actually hired a gymnastics mm-hmm. coach because um, I could do back handsprings and I could do back flips. But they were totally cattywampus. Like, if you actually looked at my form, it's all wrong. But as a kid, it's like my brothers would dare me to do stuff. And so I'd go get my pool raft, and I'd put it in the lawn. And I'd be like, all right, I'm going to do a back handspring. Just from seeing, a neighbor of mine was in gymnastics. So I'd seen it, and visually I knew what it looked like. But again, my skill was just wrong. So I hired a gymnastics coach. And he tried to teach me the skills, but learning the proper way, literally, I couldn't do anything anymore. I couldn't do my backflips at all, couldn't land them, couldn't do back handsprings. So I quickly realized when it comes to gymnastics, I can't be taught. I'm a visual learner. Mm -hmm. So I stopped working with him after like, I don't know, probably three weeks (laughs) and then just decided to watch videos. And so I just taught taught myself how to do those things and I came across break dancing and I'm like this stuff looks yeah, really hard break dancing. and I want to do that so it took a long time but I was like I want to be different I had not seen anyone on the the pro fitness stage doing break dancing and swipes mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. back spins and so I was like oh I want to learn that just so I can kind of have something different but it's all through YouTube I mean thank goodness for YouTube and Instagram and I was just a visual learner how uh, fitness versus then Versus now, what's the difference? It's, well, there's a lot of changes in regards to the physique round. Like it's, gosh, because I started, you know, 10 years ago. So I've been in the industry competing. three three different, uh, the full piece? Yeah, so they didn't have that yet. I had come in right after they got rid of like the whole cat suit and and then the one piece. So it wasn't as extreme, but yet the physiques were totally different. Like Mm -hmm. I look at... 
myself as my first Olympia, for example. And, you know, obviously Adela had been on her run as a champ and then Oksana came in and then I ended up kind of getting my first title. But looking at the physiques over the years, it's crazy how much has changed. Now, obviously every, every division has, sure. but it used to be, you know, a lot smaller and now it is really big. And even for myself, I mean, my body does not like to put on muscle up top. Lower body, it's ridiculous. Like my, my brothers and I, I think we were just born with quads. <laughs> so I don't even train lower body, but my upper body just does not like to grow. So it's like, gosh, I was seeing over the last several years, I've had to work really, really hard in order to kind of get rounder, bigger shoulders, bigger like V taper. So that's what's kind of changed a lot. Um, in regards to the routine side of things, Talking with judges, too, over the years, they want more of that entertainment value. Mm -hmm. They want, I mean, as a fitness pro, it is our job to go into a show and wake the crowd up. We need to electrify the room. We need to bring the energy, the excitement, and get them ready for the rest of the show. So if we're failing on that, then, you know, we're not going to be around for a long time. But, yeah, like, that's what I loved. And so... I try to just create these explosive, nonstop movement, powerful routines that when we come out, like you don't even know what's happening because you're like, it's so fast. You're like, what was that? Oh my gosh, no, I can't stop watching. That's what I love. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where it's changed a little bit more is they are rewarding some of that unexpected entertainment value performance element. And that's what some of the judges have said too. They just want to see an amazing performance that fits all the criteria. Where do you see fitness in two years? Um, that's a great question. I know they've had, um, I've been involved in several discussions with Sandy and the top five Olympians about, you know, trying to bring down the size. So physique wise, I feel like we're going in the direction to not keep going bigger, but to bring it down where it's more maintainable um, and, you know, attainable for others because we're trying to recruit people into the fitness division. But that means recruiting ex-cheerleaders, right, dancers right. who may not be in bodybuilding. So right. a lot of times you know, I'm out there constantly trying to talk to these young athletes going, you got to try it. Because anyone that tries the fitness division is hooked, sure. literally. But they got to try it. So the big thing is everyone's like, oh, my gosh, they're, they're scared. They're like, That's a lot of muscle. I don't, I don't have that. And so it's it's caused us to lose some of the people who are interested in wanting to try it. So I hope that we kind of go in that direction where it's not so big because, again, we're trying to grow this division and we've been really working hard towards it. So when we have verbal confirmation that that's why people are kind of stepping out, then we kind of need to address it. So I think it'll go that way. And then um, there's actually been a lot of talk with people not understanding what a routine is judged on because it's it's honestly it's comparing apples to oranges to bananas everyone has different styles which is what makes our division amazing everyone can kind of bring whatever genre that they like to perform to or that's their background whether it's gymnastics cheer hip hop break dancing lyrical like we that's what makes it exciting mm-hmm. we all come with different stuff but it has caused some i guess misunderstanding on how did this person win versus this person. Sure. So they're looking at kind of laying out specific criteria. For example, a lot of people think you have to be a gymnast and you have yes. to do tumbling yeah. passes. And it is the biggest myth. I mean, literally everyone thinks that because a lot of us do it, mm-hmm. but it's absolutely not a criteria. It's mm-hmm. not even something they score you on. It's not a mandatory. If you have it, great. But Adela Garcia won eight years. She was not a gymnast. Mm-hmm. Oksana learned a back handspring literally the year um, before she retired the first time. And that was the extent of her gymnastics. And she was a champion. Yes, I do tumbling passes and back tucks and back handsprings and, you know, some elements of gymnastics. But it's not, I'm not a gymnast by any means. So it's just trying to help get the information out there that, This is what they're judging you on. Mm -hmm. This is the criteria to follow, but yet you get to still bring your whole own creative style. So I don't think it'll change drastically because it's not bad. I like where it's at right now in regards to allowing 
all of the athletes the freedom to bring their own creative expression. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that will change. I think they're just trying to kind of make it more clear as to what is being judged when they judge the fitness mm -hmm. routines. I would like to see more fitness uh, divisions at some of the shows. Yes. I feel before it was a lot of them. Now it's gone smaller in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't know how you feel about that. For but, sure. Yeah. yeah. And we're always looking for more shows and especially too with a lot of these newbies that are coming in. I coach a ton of fitness athletes from amateur as well as pros that I actually step on stage and compete against. The interest is there and it's just having shows that we can compete in. Sometimes the numbers are low, but I wish that people could understand, like, our division is tough. I mean, you get it. It is it. tough, yeah. So we could be absolutely all in to do the show, but if an injury happens, sometimes it sidelines us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we're out for good, but we do need time to rehab. Sure. And so, they, you know, they say, oh, well, what if the numbers aren't high? Unfortunately, it is a risk because you could have, I don't know, 20 girls planning to do the show, but if there's a couple injuries sure. in that prep, you know, the numbers will dwindle. So it is tough. But yet, every promoter also says, I love the fitness division. I love having you guys here. And it's like, okay, so put us in your show. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. Right. So it was really cool when we saw uh, four-time Miss Olympia, Kim Shevesky, go into fitness. Uh-huh. Which is like, wow. Yeah. That was a big transformation that mm -hmm. she did. You know, she did good, but she tried it out and then went into, uh, I think, figure. Uh huh. You know, but I just brought that up because, again, like you, anybody can do anything to put their mind to. Ap and so many athletes that are already pro say, mm -hmm. I would love to do fitness. And I always say, Well, what is it that's preventing you? And they say, I can't do the stuff that you can do. Well, but you just said you're a gymnast all your life. You can do more than I can right now. So, but yeah, it's a lot of people love it. And it's like, Why not try it? Why I would not love try to try it? it one time. Uh, yeah. A routine. Just well, you know, just watching it. all your shows and the skits you do, I love that you just, you don't hesitate. You will try anything. And you're like, I may not be able to do it, but you try. That's okay. that's what a fitness athlete is. i got to make a correction here real quick. She says I'll try anything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get any ideas <laughs> out there, people. Because I don't try anything. <laughs> Although later we do have something fun Mm, that involves fun? A, Ooh. It involves a shock dog collar. Oh, okay. I'm in. I'm in. Now you're holding the button, so you are in. Really? Any, anyway, I'm being serious. Um, <gasps> but going back, so you have, you've accomplished so much, and you're a great ambassador, you know, Thank of the sport. What, in your opinion, <clears throat> should a Miss Olympia do? When you're a Miss Olympia winner, what do you think that job is for the year? Honestly, so it's it's funny you ask that because I always say a true champion is not those moments on stage. It's what you do the second you step off stage and for that entire year that you mm -hmm. hold the title. As a representative for our sport, honestly, it's helping to bring people into the sport, be a good role model, explain that, look, this is what I do. But like for me, I own five different businesses. I'm a single mom with two crazy busy kids. I still find time to prep and I love it. So showing people that you don't have to put your entire life on hold just to be in our sport, but it's just being out there. It's being present. Um, you know, I feel like I'm totally approachable, but it's still not really, really. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, one time you called me a bitch, like get away from me, bitch. I'm like, Jesus, not I just right. wanted to say hi. I just wanted a picture with you, lady. So it thanks. Was, it only had to have been, you must be a hot bitch because then. No, actually, I was pretty fugly at the time. That's probably why you said, you, you, treated, you treated me like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. You are right. I would never call you that. I, I got it recorded. Uh, do you really? <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Roll footage, please. <laughs> no, I'm but joking. it's just really, it's making people feel like they're a part of the community. Our sport is incredible. And just, um, being at the top is, I'm just like everybody else, but people are, oh, it's nice to meet you. And it's like, oh, I, I want to get to know them and, and have conversations with them. So it's honestly being a champion is being a role model, helping represent the sport to the best of your ability, encouraging those who need the encouragement to either start and try out the sport or continue in the sport. Maybe they've had some bad experiences. Maybe they're down. That's what being a champion is, is really kind of representing what our sport is all about because it's so incredible. And also, too, inspiring those who 
may not want to compete as well, I would think. So you're you're giving them hope. Yes. Right? Like right. you always talk about your journeys. Yes. yes. Which is huge because you've had many journeys. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I love that you said when you, you know, went through your neck uh, surgery and stuff is that you wanted to be an inspiration for somebody. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and why, I mean, what, how did you get with this? You have a very kind heart. So what was it in your life that made you such an open people person? You love everybody. Like I've been around, I'm watching a stalker. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm seeing you engage with people, people who are just regular people, and you make them feel like they're way up here on top of the world. Oh. And when they walk away from you, they're just, their eyes are lit up. They're so happy. They feel so good about That's themselves. Right. And you're very good at that. I mean, obviously you have, like you said, the five businesses, you have pro physiques, which is huge. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you, how did you get that? I'm just curious. How did you get that fire? How did you... That mindset that you have, you have such, like this, you are what a champion should be. Now, I'm just going to, I'm not going to call anybody out, but we do have champions now and past mm -hmm. who are not so approachable and who are not, in my opinion, a great ambassador of the sport. Sure. They just take the title. Right. Go and hide <laughs> for a year or whatever. Yeah. You may see them here and there because it's big money on the line. They go, you know, whatever. I get right. it. Right. But they're not really wanting to be out there and be the spokesperson. Right. Because you are a walking billboard, hence why you're in shape 365 days a year. <laughs> now, did I hear correctly you're only five pounds off your weight? Yeah. I really... Five I pounds. Yeah. I don't... I mean, it's crazy because like the 3D-ness comes out once I get in prep, but weight-wise, um, if anything, in the off-season, because I, I have to give my body a break so I don't lift as hard and heavy... But I lose my muscle fullness so fast. And so... I got something for you. Hey, yeah? I got to ask my director, Nico, can I just escape for one second? I have something for you. Okay. Since, since you always, you know, you were scared about losing weight. <laughs> Uh-oh. This ought to be interesting. <laughs> this oh. is for you. Okay. What do we have here? Oh, of course. I go hmm. all day. Oh, ho, ho. You it's, know me well. You did it's, do your Well, it's not, it's not the flavor you like. I, I do not discriminate. Oreos are Oreos. I will eat them all. Are you going to share them with me? No, I can't eat. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sawdust and water, babe. That's <laughs> all I'm having now. <laughs> that does not sound at all exciting. <laughs> Sorry, I, I kind of forgot all about it. I was so in tune in the superstar here. But yes, I want to give you some Oreos. So now, anytime you're feeling kind of... Yeah, just fill them out. Put the Oreos that you have straight to my shoulders. <laughs> but you, look, you're always in phenomenal shape. And again, you are a, a walking billboard. You are what a champion. You are a good rep. And plus, uh, having the gym too and training so many people, you have to you have to represent, right? Sure. I mean, in all reality, though, you should be representing the sport year round. So again, it's like there are some people they have to have the bulking stages and whatnot, but still. You have to keep things in check because at a moment's notice, you may be called to do an appearance. You may be called for photo shoot, interviews. You want to look the part. You want to look like the champ, the number one in the world for your division year round. So mm -hmm. it is hard if you have to kind of do that bulking type season. So you still got to keep things in check, in my opinion, just because, again, the last thing you want in our industry where it's based on your physique is to show up looking a little frumpy or out of shape. Right. And it's like, wait, that's the champ? So, yeah, I mean, honestly, you, you've you got to walk the walk, talk the talk, and be the representative year-round. And let's not forget, JM is always taking photos. Always. Oh, yeah. So he, he gets some good <laughs> he he always get gets some photos. With me eating. Yeah, always. But again, always. I'm kind of always eating, so I guess that's fair game. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, look, you're right, because if there's someone who is out of shape and you're a champion, I mean, how do you feel? Do you feel disrespected if you see something like that? Honestly, I'm just curious. Not disrespected, because honestly, I, I don't judge. I mean, if they're judge. on stage and if they're, no, so you don't judge. Yeah, right? it's like, you, because you never know what, what their journey is yes. and what they've gone through. And maybe they're struggling with sure. some health issues. Sure. But if they still showed up and if they're representing it and if they're proud of themselves, then who is anyone to discount their work ethic? And let me ask you this. Does it matter what people think anyway? I personally could care less. I mean, I have enough haters and... You? Whatever. Yeah. Why are people hating on you? You name it. They don't like because my Because you're goofiness. the chance? They don't like, because you're <laughs> intimidating? Know. Honestly, it's, you're happy. Who knows? It's for a miserable? variety of reasons. Yeah. A lot of people are like, there's no way you're that happy. 
Okay. I mean, again, it's if social media has given people this avenue to have a voice where they would never say it to my face. I can sure. guarantee you that. But it's just these people who hide behind the screen or sure. the keyboard and they just want to put out negative comments. But in regards to social media, it's like, look, if you don't like me, don't follow me. I could care less. Honestly, like right. I am myself. I put out educational content. I do fitness and workout tips. I post ridiculous memes. I do shenanigans and stupid stuff. I am me. Like, if you don't like it, I don't care. But again, I'm having fun and I'm enjoying my life. And that's and all that matters. Yeah. If, if I was doing bad things out there, murdering people, okay, judge me, hate me, criticize me. But I'm not a murderer. No, you're a champion. <laughs> yes, I'm a champion. <laughs> so tell me about your beautiful two kids, your sons. Oh my gosh, they How are... How old are they? They're, so my oldest just turned 16, which is crazy because he's now driving, <laughs> which is scary, but also very beneficial and, <laughs> and helpful. And then my uh, youngest is 13, so two boys. So um, Brody is the, my oldest, 16, and he's a sophomore in high school. And then Jake is a seventh grader in junior high. Uh, what do they think of mama? Did they go they, see you at the Olympia? Yes. Okay. So they love it. And they're actually, um, I tell this story all the time because they help me with my routines. Explain. If you think, so here's the thing. So like I will work on these crazy combos, like degree of difficulty way high in my opinion. And I will be like, I don't know, a month of working on it. And I finally nail this skill or this combo and I'll show them. And they're like, eh. Yeah. And I'm like, What? You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. That is, that is so difficult. They're like, it doesn't really have a wow factor. You always say to look for the wow factor. So I'll record wow. everything because like I'm kind of my own choreographer mm -hmm. in that aspect. Mm -hmm. And I'll show them stuff. And it's some of the littlest wow. silly details that they're like, that was so cool. But again, what we do is entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I value their opinion because they've seen enough routines, not just mine, but you know, at Olympia and they watch the videos with me online at different shows. So they see what gets a reaction. And so I use their perceptions and their opinions to help sculpt my routine. Now that is interesting. Yeah. I never let them see the full thing until the big day though. I like the big reveal. Well, that's not fair. I know. Now see, that's really not fair. Hey. I mean, they're helping you put the routine together, <laughs> but yet you hide it, the whole thing from them. Yes. So they only see parts uh -huh. here and there, and they always will help me choreograph my opening. They uh -huh. help me pick songs. Like, they, it's just, it becomes kind of this little family type strategy, which makes it so much fun. Of course. And they're so proud, which is, to me, means the world. Because if they weren't on board with it, there'd be no way I could do it. But so it's they, interesting. It's what they think, then that yeah, matters to you. Yeah, and they love it. And you know what? It's the best part about it as a mom is you realize you're a constant role model. And so I've overheard them talking to their friends, you know, like literally they didn't even know I was listening, saying, I'm so tired. I don't want to go to football practice right now. But I see my mom get up and right. she was working late night and she gets up at 5 a.m. And she was on the treadmill doing her cardio, just half asleep. If she can do it, I can do it. And it's like, uh. wow, like you realize they're you're setting that example. And so without them just saying they're proud of me and that they enjoy what I do and they're excited for me, the fact that they're replicating the work ethic and realizing mm -hmm. stuff just doesn't happen. You have to work for it. If you want something, you work day in and day out to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the most proud things that you can have as a parent. Tell me one of your best moments with your sons, your favorite, or something that really, that you, that just really just hits home with some of my injuries um you know there's there's days people say oh you're always happy i have bad days obviously sure. they've seen me go through enough but they've seen me survive and not just survive but thrive and come back so sometimes when i'm dealing with an injury that's just you know i, I have setbacks or it's like you know i went too fast too quick mm -hmm. in my recovery and so i need to kind of trail things back they'll always remind me mom this is just a temporary thing. 
You know you're going to overcome this. You know you're... And it's like, those are things that I say to them. Those are things I say to my athletes. They're at such a young age. I mean, this is through the years, too. They were the ones who were motivating me to make sure my mindset was on point. Mm -hmm. To me, that has more value than anything. That they believed in me, number one. And that they've seen through all my experiences that... This is nothing, mom. Come on. Especially because breaking my neck was by far the hardest sure. injury. So anything past that's like, psh, come on, mom. Really? You broke your leg. You broke your arm. Like, whatever. And it, we laugh about it. And it's like, yeah, you're right. So they help put things into perspective. And then also, I think um, the 2020 Olympia. So I, I lost my title, um, which one thing that's so crazy to me, I have to say this, is I'm competing on the biggest stage in the world. I'm very lucky and very fortunate to be stepping on that Olympia stage. Yes, I would love to have had my title, but I got third. I'm number three in the world. Mm -hmm. You can't believe how many condolences texts I got. And it's like, if I'm actually having this pity party for being number three in the world and being on the Olympia stage, that's awful. To me, that is awful. And so it's like I would quickly say, what? They're like, I am so sorry. You've got to be devastated. I'm like, absolutely not. Well, one thing that was just even more powerful is right after that, you know, my boys <laughs> shouldn't say this, but they snuck backstage. And even though I got third, I was feeling great. I loved my routine. I was super happy with the physique I presented. Sure. There were so many wins that year. That was a COVID year. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. very tough. Mm -hmm. um, I had some health issues with my lungs because I had COVID uh, twice in 2020. Oh, wow. And so it was a huge win that I was able to perform at the ability or at mm -hmm. the level that I did. Mm -hmm. They came running back, which they'd never been backstage. I still don't know how. They just kind of ran. And they came and hugged me. Aww. And we literally cried with joy backstage. And they said, that was the best you've ever performed. And this was so fun. And it was in Florida that year. So they it was a new experience compared to Vegas. Sure. We were relishing in the moment, and it was like I had just lost, and it had no significance. Mm -hmm. They didn't care. To me, I had won. They were like, you were amazing. Those moments are so freaking special that it takes away all the superficial crap that people live in day to day. They do. And yeah. they just think I was, they thought I was just so amazing. It was like, Guys, do you realize I was number three? I didn't win the title, just to make it clear. And they're like, yeah, awesome. Okay, let's celebrate third Aww. place. And we went out, and it was just, yeah. I mean, those things are, those are moments that have value beyond words. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Tell me about pro, now pro physiques, you train amateur, pros, and you have, how many pro cards did you guys win this past year. Oh my gosh, this past year. Because um, we have a team. So it's it's definitely not just me. There's no way we Tell could me who's be on your team. amazing. So Damien and I own mm -hmm. Pro Physiques. And so Is it's Damien really your butler? <laughs> butler? <laughs> I heard something I about you saying he's your butler. <laughs> I wish. Gosh, no. <laughs> that would be the day. One, maybe, maybe if you could convince him, but oh, heck no. <laughs> but it's the two of us. And then um, we have Renee Harshi, who mm -hmm. is an IFBB mm -hmm. wellness pro. We have Debbie Goodman, Alex, who are both bikini pros. Mm -hmm. um, Alex Ross, who's, mm -hmm. she's been your, on. Your partner too. in crime. Oh, yeah, partner in crime. Funny videos, yeah. <laughs> yes. Abby Gaetano, she's also yeah. a bikini pro. Ashley Garcia, she's a figure pro. So we have a ton of these people, Sally Williams, that all help prep. Our clients on our team. Mm -hmm. So it's it's amazing to have that team atmosphere for people who walk the walk and talk the talk. I mean, we're all still competing. Mm -hmm. So we understand what criteria is for each year because it's constantly changing. We're in the thick of the industry. So we know what the judges are looking for. We know the trends. We know how to prep. We know the mm -hmm. struggles of prep. So it helps for our athletes because let's be honest, prepping for a show is not easy. Mm -hmm. But no one's forcing you to do it. So if you choose to do it, you better care about your prep as much as we do. Otherwise, there's plenty of teams out there who mm -hmm. will take you. Mm -hmm. So we take it very seriously. Um, our clients have the no excuse mentality, which I love. They're athletes. They're not getting on stage just to get the photos and be Insta famous on, on the gram, you know. So it's, it's awesome. We have amazing people that 
are on our team that as staff, as trainers, as well as clients. And yeah, we've been very lucky to have such amazing success. I mean, right now, Sid, she's one of our clients. Five time. Just five times. Olympia. Five yeah. times, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, and then obviously myself, um, current champ for fitness, and we have we had Courtney King as a client when oh, she wow. won Olympia as wow. well. So, you know, we have experience in all these different categories, and we have fun with it. And last year, gosh, pro cards to answer your question, I think it was 40-something. I should wow. know off the top of my head, but yeah, it's, it's we've had a, it's some good. amazing success. Mm-hmm. But it's a team effort. Again, never will you ever see myself, Damien, or any of the other coaches try to take the credit ourselves because that. it's an absolute team right. effort. But that's what it's all about, team. Yeah, isn't it? and it w- makes it way more fun that way. Right. right, and you guys support each other. A hundred percent. So Pro Physics, is it, is it a private gym then, right? It's actually, so with Co- it used to be. With COVID, okay. we actually turned it into a public gym. Oh. It was kind of that loophole we found <laughs> with Arizona oh, gotcha. where – since we had key card access in our gym here, because we're out in Gilbert, mm-hmm. we were able to keep the gym open because we could monitor how many people were within the facility. So, but then we loved that because it used to just be private. You could only go in there if you were working one on one with a trainer. Mm-hmm. But now we do membership access so people can train there um, just like they would at EOS, LA Fitness, or any standard mm-hmm. club, corporate box gym. So we have opened it up, but we do cap it. We don't want to be sure. everything to everyone. Which is smart. Yeah. So what's interesting is, uh, too, any of the champions, anybody who knows Pro Physiques, when soon as they land in Phoenix, they're going to Pro Physiques. Yeah. Because your gym is, like, number one in the area for, you know, the for serious lifters and people yeah. who want to get into the sport and all that kind of stuff. So I applaud you on that. And it looks badass. So oh, thanks. How did you come up with the Pro Physiques? How did that happen? Well, actually, so when we first started, um, it was AZ Pro Physiques. And then we realized there was a lot of people who heard about us, um, knew we trained a lot of the pro athletes, whether they were in the industry or not. A lot of people wanted to just train at the gym because it's kind of like the who's who. I mean, honestly, there's always someone in from out of town. We always have pros that are currently training that live here in Arizona as well as who are visiting. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, huh, we're probably pigeonholing ourselves by making it just local. So early on, we switched it to Pro Physiques. Mm -hmm. And it was just because whether you're looking to be a competitor or you're just a lifestyle client, because we train Mm -hmm. a lot of lifestyle clients. That's a majority of our client Uh base at the gym. Mm -hmm. The prep side is just a niche. But Pro Physiques is looking the way you want to look, whether it's losing weight, whether it's, you know, an an athlete in like specific training. We train a lot of high school kids who are in Football, baseball, golf, you name it. You know, they're wanting that pro element. Um, or just looking like you could step on stage and, and totally regulate that show. It's getting the clients to their goal. And we as professionals and knowing what we know, we can get you there. So that's how we kind of came up with that. You ever work with any special uh, Special Olympics uh, children? We haven't. You know, we've done um, we've done charity work with sure. stuff like That's that. Good. Good. Yeah, and love it. I mean, we love interacting with our own community, sure. um, giving back, and just doing that the stuff where it's motivational and inspirational. Because again, like those athletes are absolutely motivation. Oh my gosh! And it's so yeah. fun to see, especially young kids who are dealt you know difficulties in life that they don't recognize. They just roll with it. And they're like, yeah, you know, and they may have this disability or, you know, confined to a wheelchair. Figure out what you can do within your realm and within your ability to be the best that you can be. And that positivity and that mindset is so powerful because there's so many people out there who have nothing wrong. And they just have these pity party victim mentality. And it's like, really? If someone who's dealing with major difficulties can find a way than you can too. Absolutely. Tell me about, so you also have your own clothing line. Uh huh. You're the host of Femflex Friday, mm-hmm. which is awesome. Great yeah. show. Thank um, you. Yeah. Of course, you're a full-time mother. What other, what other businesses you have five? Pro mm-hmm. Physiques, the clothing line, online training? Yep. So an what online else? training company. And, um, and again, that's worldwide. So we train clients for mm-hmm. lifestyle mm-hmm. as well as for prep all over the world, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, then I also have the Whitney Jones Classic. It's an oh, amateur right, show yeah. here in Arizona. October so this event, year? Yes, October 29th, coming up. If anyone wants to participate as an athlete, supporter, 
whatnot. We have a blast. It's um, been one of the biggest shows the last two years in Arizona. And so this year we have a lot of fun stuff planned. I'm super excited about it. Can you give it. some details? Well, we went to a new venue that's bigger. And, um, you know, obviously with all these shows, there's a lot of restrictions on what you can do and and kind of I like to have fun <laughs> I like to right. do stuff that no other shows do so we have two things we're rolling out that can't tell just okay. yet but it's going to be exciting yeah totally exciting and then you know I'm I'm lucky and very fortunate that I have so many friendships and connections in the industry and I love spoiling our athletes that do my show so the swag that they get oh. is incredible and so this year it's it's every year it just gets bigger and better with all the different goodies they get because as an athlete let's let's think about it you enjoy going to the shows where you get spoiled a little because at the end of the day not everyone's going to win but you can be happy that you had an amazing time on stage you had an amazing time off stage you got spoiled with all this cool stuff swag um supplements all these freebies you guys with the wings of strength their shows are amazing too mm-hmm. and you guys take care of athletes lots of swag yes lots but that's swag. it's amazing how many people yeah. will pick shows based on that oh, of course yeah. so spoil them because sometimes you go to a show and you're like oh i get a number that's it cool like and that's not a bad thing, but with the connections I have, why not utilize it? Sure. And I can ask, and they can say no, but several of them don't, and then it works out in the favor of the athlete. So I go to uh, some of the UBU Ed and Betty Pariso shows, mm-hmm. and it's funny because at the athlete check, and he has stacks of candy, mm-hmm. big candy bars and stuff. And I'm thinking, it's a freaking show. I yeah. can't be eating this. Yeah. Huh? But you know, he loves giving sweets, and I just totally was nice. But uh, so you have the clothing line as well. Mm-hmm. Um, how long has that been? Have you had that? Gosh, I've had the clothing line now six years. Yep. Six years. And it's crazy because obviously with COVID, we, it was crazy with, you know, sourcing fabric and um, all of my people I work with are overseas. So things got held up and finally we're coming out of it. So we have a lot of new styles that will be coming out soon. And I'm excited about that because it's like, our hands were just tied for so long going, ah, we can't release any new items and new designs and new swag. So we got some stuff coming out with that. So something I wanted to know about you. Mm-hmm. When you get your eighth, ninth, tenth Olympia win, <laughs> what do you want to leave as your legacy? How do you want to be remembered by people? I want to be remembered for helping encourage them to go after their dreams, honestly. And it's not just, like you said, it's not just talking to people in our sport. As a champion, you have a platform to speak to a lot of people. It's interesting to me, I get so many messages from moms because there's this mom guilt. Once you have kids, that's your life. Mm -hmm. And it has to be. I mean, that is your role. Like you are, you need to build amazing humans. (laughs) Like do not build some jackasses in our (laughs) world. So it does, it's hard. It takes a lot of time, but... I hear from so many moms who put aside their goals and their dreams. And it's like, oh, this is just what I need to do in life. And there's nothing that they're searching for in regards to their own happiness. I love trying to inspire them to go, what is it you want to do? Why do you feel like you can't? Like, let's erase the fear. Let's erase the, what if I fail with that? Or I don't have the time to do this. Or I don't have the financial means to do it. Set a goal. Right. And find a way. Right. Be realistic in your strategy to get there. But I want to use my platform showing people, hey, look, I'm an Olympia champ. It's not like I'm sitting at home, you know, eating bonbons, twiddling my thumbs and just going to the gym every day because I have this rich husband who financially supports sure. me and I have no job and I have the time in the world. Yeah. I That is so far from me. But I've still found a way. And so it's... in. For me, I love hearing people go, wow, you helped me banish my own excuses because I have way more time than you do, and you still found a way. Now, that may not mean that they're trying to step on stage. It could be that they had a desire to start their own company or to start this side hustle while still being a mom. Mm -hmm. Um, It could be that they wanted to run a marathon, and they just thought that I don't have time to do it. Whatever those dreams are, I want people to be inspired to find a way to achieve the dreams that they have. Maybe it was when they were a kid. Maybe it's now. Hit everything on your bucket list. Like when you are at the end of your life, 
I don't want to ever have any regret. So anyone that's living in that shoulda, woulda, coulda mindset right now, flip it, change it. You have control over it. Change everything now. Do everything you want to do. So at the end of your life, you can look back and go, that was pretty rad. Mm -hmm. Now, your kids have a great mom because you shoot guns, you do all this cool stuff, you (laughs) snowboard. I mean, is there anything you take phenomenal photos Oh, thanks. Uh, Kai York stuff, yes. Sean Nelson stuff. Well, I, it's because I work with amazing and magical photographers that make me look amazing. No, it's you. <laughs> I just hold the camera and click, 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 click. <laughs> That's all it is. But uh, you're always uh, spectacular, and I look forward to seeing you win another title under your belt and many, thank many more. Thank you. And uh, thank you for all you do for the sports and the fans. Uh, you're very inspiring. You've inspired me because I've been struggling a little bit, um, you know, I'm not going to talk about, I'm very short on this, but in our sport, you know, there's a lot of mental health. Things. Oh, yeah, for All sure. All these things, there's for a lot sure. of pressure. And people like you are like a beacon of light. You bring out, as soon as you walk in the room, you light it up. Well, you know, you. so it's interesting because there's a lot of people that you probably don't realize that you touch their hearts and you inspire and motivate them and you give them hope. Mm-hmm. I hope that one day we get to either have a documentary on you or we get to <laughs> have a book on you. Because you truly, and we didn't cover everything, Mm -hmm. you truly have been through a lot. And for you to still hold your head high and achieve the things you have, I mean, you have many businesses, you're a fighter, you do not let anything stop you. And there's still more in a tank, like you still have other things, because you want to put your hands as many pots as you can, you know, and that's good. But the most important thing is you have a huge heart. You have a strong mind, you have a very intelligent, you're a very beautiful woman, but you have a very kind heart. And in this world, the one thing we need the most is the kind, the kindness. With you being a phenomenal champion that you are, you know, and having the kind heart that you do, it goes a long way. It really does. So. Well, to your point, too, there's everyone has battles. Everyone sure. has struggles. And you never know what is behind that mm-hmm. smile or that mm-hmm. frown. Mm-hmm. Having tolerance in the world, especially lately, is so needed. And it's not hard to be a kind human. It really is mm-hmm. not. Whether it's just a simple smile or you're taking the time to ask someone, how are you doing? How's your day? It's not that hard. And just honestly, having a sense of gratitude and appreciation goes a long way. Some days when stuff is going sideways and I want to pull my hair out, I have to kind of remove myself from whatever that environment is, take a deep breath, and focus on what I have going right in my life, what I have going good. And so many times people refuse to look at the good and they can only focus on what's not working or what they don't have. And it's the worst thing you can do. Mm -hmm. Everyone has something they can be grateful for. Amen, sister. (laughs) High five to that because I truly believe in that. Yes, absolutely. I also believe everybody's like, oh, I'm ugly. Every single person in this world, I don't care who you are, has something beautiful inside them. Mm -hmm. It's dying and just come out. You know what I mean? But anyway... I got to wrap it up. It was amazing. I could talk to you for hours. I know. (laughs) Um, Well, hey, there is a book coming out. It's actually in the works. So, yeah. Really? Yes. Good. It's coming out. It's about halfway through right now. Good. Good. Because uh, we want to hear, we want to read your story and hear it. Is there going to be an audio version, right? There should be. Yes, that's the plan. And I also like to see a movie. Oh, all right. All right. One more question I'm going to ask you. If you were a flavor of ice cream, what would it be? Ooh. I would say Rocky Road. Because I've got so many bruises, <laughs> and, and, but it's good. It's full of goodness, but there's all these little surprises all throughout it. I and, like it. You know, with the metal and the broken bones and funny things sticking out of me. I mean, I'm kind of like a rocky road with my body. <laughs> I, I love you. I adore you. Whitney, thanks so much for being on. It's truly an Thank honor. Thank you. Guys, till next time, Pit Rockstar signing off.